Problem 13 here and a very fun problem. To start, tan x is equal to e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by e to the x plus e to the minus x. All right, so if that was too fast, let's write it down. And of course, proper grammar for an improper integral would have us write lim is b goes to infinity and then zero to b, right? Okay, but yeah, what I said about tan x is that it's equal to this, this here, right? Uh, okay, it doesn't seem like I could write this without writing that or display it. Anyway, anyway, this here is tan x. And so I'm going to write 1 over um, e to the x because we have x specs uh, in the denominator, right? Okay, which is e to the x, right? Okay, all right, all right. Now let's work a little bit more with this expression. So um, that amounts to like doing this, right? And then doing that. So right now what I have here, right? is just this here, which is the same as tan x, right? Okay, so I still need to multiply by 1 over e to the x is what I'm saying, and by dx. Okay, now uh, let's do a little bit more algebra, which is find common denominators here, and let's distribute this e to the x uh, in this part, yeah? Okay, so if we do both, then uh, the common denominator part would have us write this, right? And you can work that out more carefully, but that's uh, correct. And then... Uh, if we distribute this e to the x here to these guys, this is going to turn into e to the x squared, and then this is going to turn into a 1, right? So uh, we'd have that, yeah? Okay, now, um, okay, so from here, uh, I'm saying, I'm just pointing out now that this here is that, and uh, this here is that distributed to these guys. So um, it's actually, the video is actually behind our, like, voice or my voice or where we're at and yeah yeah okay okay um so 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 like we go dx right okay and then now we're gonna make a substitution um but let's first clean this up a little bit and rewrite it like that right because yeah um yeah it's easy to see that this here is the same as this here okay and so let's make that said substitution with u equaling e to, e to the x so du is equal to e to the x dx and so dx is du over e to the x. Also observe that as x goes to infinity, because this b here is about x, but yeah, as x goes to infinity, so does uh, u. u also goes to infinity, right? Because um, as x goes to infinity, e to the x goes to infinity. And now, since we're about u, let's change this b to uh, b a, right? And so we have lim is a goes to infinity, and then it's going to be 1 to a because uh, here the lower limit is going to be uh, e to the 0, which is 1, yeah? Okay, so uh, 1 to a, and then uh, otherwise, you know, we know we need to replace this here with a u, so we get u squared minus 1, and then um, divided by u, that u is for this e to the x, right? There is that u, right? Okay, and then u squared plus 1, right? But then dx is du over e to the x, but e to the x is u. So we can get rid of this e to the x right here and just square that u right there, yeah? Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. The bulk of the work in this video is um, what we're about to do here, which is partial fraction decomposition. So I'm going to um, talk as fast as I'm displaying. Okay, so now this is not a video on partial fraction decomposition, so I can only talk you through the partial fraction decomposition steps uh, so much. Um, but yeah, like basically we start here, right? Like, and uh, since uh, we have a quadratic and a quadratic, um, quadratic denominators in the partial fraction decomposition process require assumption of linear numerators. And that's what I've done here. Otherwise, we get common denominators in this part so that we have like the denominator we have here. And that's going to be that there. And so the numerators, uh, the numerator, um, once we get a common denominator in this part, the numerator will have to be this. And now that the denominator is here far right and far left comparison, the denominators are the same. We only require that the numerators be the same, right? Okay, okay. So that's sufficient, like, help on the partial fraction decomposition step. And, uh, yeah, like, I may be going a little too fast, but, yeah, what we require is... Um, showing that the numerators are the same, right? Okay, now the numerator, this here, right? Um, if we like expand and combine like terms is first going to look like that. And then now um, if we like collect like terms, it's gonna look like that. And notice that we said that this numerator here will have to equal this numerator here. 
And this numerator here, if we show all of the coefficients, can be written as a 0u cubed plus 1u squared plus 0u minus 1, right? And so then comparison of coefficients would go like this, right? So these guys would have to be equal to each other, and then the b would have to be equal to negative 1. So that's saying that uh, a would have to be 0 because uh, I'm going too fast. Yes, a would have to be 0 because clearly this here would have to be equal to that and B would have to be equal to negative one those are the two immediate things and then a plus C would have to be equal to zero but since a is zero that means C is zero and B plus D will have to equal one the coefficient of uh, u squared here would have to be one right uh, and knowing that uh, B is negative one that means the D must be two right okay cool so we know these things and now we need to make space and we do and so we come back uh, from where we left off on our integral, which is this here. And now the decomposition work we've done has told us that this integrand here is the same as 2 over u squared plus 1 and then minus 1 over u squared, right? Okay, cool. So we do that. Um, and u squared plus 1 here is probably easier to recognize as 1 plus u squared because then this is arctan u, right? And the other guy is that, right? And easy enough to uh, find the antiderivative of. So we go, all right, the first guy, as we said, is arctan u. The second guy, if you find his antiderivative, it's going to be like uh, u to the negative 1 divided by negative 1. And so the negatives will cancel to a plus. Otherwise, you get 1 over u. And we evaluate from um, 1 to a and send the limit as a goes to infinity, right? Now, uh, so we plug in a, we plug in 1 and take the difference so that it first looked like this, right? Now, um, okay, and I'm supposed to plug in 1 there. I was like thinking back to the 0 there, but yeah, like we plug in a and then we plug in 1 and then take the difference, the difference being that minus sign right there, yeah? Okay, cool. Um, all right, and so when we plug in 1, we get this. When we plug in a, we get this. Now, um couple of things. One is, as a goes to infinity, uh, tan inverse of a goes to pi over 2. Pi over 2 is a horizontal asymptote for tan inverse, right? Okay, and um, it's like the, it's one of two horizontal asymptotes. And uh, as uh, a goes to infinity, tan inverse goes to the horizontal asymptote pi over 2. Okay, so we get in this part 2 times pi over 2, and obviously as a goes to infinity, 1 over a goes to 0. And then we'll have minus 2 times tan inverse of 1 is pi over 4. So 2 times pi over 4 and then minus 1. So we'll have minus 2 times pi over 4 minus 1, yeah? Okay, so uh, if we clean this up, like first this is pi, right? And the 0 we don't need to write. And this is minus pi over 2. And then we have minus 1. So pi minus pi over 2 minus 1 simplifies to pi over 2 minus 1, our final answer. Yeah. Okay, cool. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep watching. Take care.